Today I'm diving deep into the latest MacBook lineup, testing their limits with external displays and their impact on performance. Ooh. I got MacBook Pros, M3 Max, M2 Max, M3, M3 Pro, and a MacBook Air with an M2 chip. And all these have different external display support, according to official Apple documentation. I'm testing this out with two LG 27 inch 4K displays set up vertically next to me. Code reads beautifully when it's a vertical screen. Look how much code I can fit in. A J-Link 34 inch 144 Hertz curved gaming monitor two portable displays by Monduo, each with 120 hertz refresh rate, and a shiny glossy Doe monitor, it used to be called Eve, now it's called Doe. That one's 144 hertz as well. Whew, suddenly it's really warm in here. I don't know why. Beginning with the basics, I'm unplugging two monitors to focus solely on the laptop's internal display for initial tests. The built-in screen is much nicer looking, by the way. I'm allowed to have opinions, okay? <laughs> we don't sit around just with one test open, one benchmark, or one IDE. This is why we have multiple monitors in the first place. But I'm going to start out with 15 tabs open with Chrome, a couple of instances of Visual Studio Code. For those of you that are developers, I'll make the code available. Those of you that are not developers, suffice to say that one of these pieces of code is going to run an intensive test that generates the Mandelbrot sequence. That's the fractal patterns in numeric format, and that's going to be a CPU heavy task. Another one is a GPU demanding whisper project for audio transcription. And finally, there is a memory heavy merge sort algorithm. That one uses a lot of memory. We'll see how all these get affected as the tests go on. Now running these, the 64 gigabyte MacBook Pro is using 14.4 gigabytes of RAM, showing no swap or compression. And the Windows server is consuming 370 megabytes. Windows server? This is a Mac. What the heck is Windows doing on it? Well, despite the naming similarities to Windows Server, Windows Server is a process on Macs that manages your open UI windows. Makes sense, right? And when you add more monitors, Windows Server should use more memory. We're gonna test that out. I started by timing the CPU intensive Mandelbrot Python program without external monitors. This clocks in at 25.8 seconds. Next, I ran Whisper. That's the GPU heavy task. I might just interchange these terms going forward. This one's processing a video file, which is one of my videos, and it took 51.6 seconds. And finally, I tried using different numbers of integers to do the merge sort. I tried 10 million, uh, that one uses 500 megabytes of RAM, and that completed in 32 seconds. These initial tests establish our baseline for CPU, GPU, and memory performance, and offer a clear comparison point for the impact of additional displays. Now let's plug the monitors back in. I connected monitors using Thunderbolt cables to two hubs, linking two displays on each side. The setup includes playing a few YouTube videos, part of my usual Chrome tab collection, and some coding workspaces. I'd say for an average developer, this is probably um, on the lighter side of load. Now currently Windows Server RAM usage has risen to 1.17 gigabytes with overall memory at 17.1 gigabytes. No swap or compression. Initial CPU and GPU tests showed slight variation within the margin of error, suggesting minimal impact from the connected displays. Despite what I expected, the GPU is operating around 80% utilization and it didn't suffer significantly from the multi-monitor setup. But this is a really powerful machine and we're still within the bounds of Apple's documentation. So for now we're okay. All right, I've changed things around just a little bit here. For the two side displays, this one and this one, I've actually set the resolution higher to the maximum possible that it can do. I don't normally use my monitors at such high resolution because, well, getting old, it's hard to see stuff. And while I'm doing this, I'm monitoring the memory usage by Windows Server, the memory usage overall, and the GPU history. I am seeing a little bit of variance there, but in general, it's going down after that test we did. Also, for these, monitors up here. I started playing 8K video uh, for this one right here and this one right here. I'm actually also scaling those to the highest possible resolution, both of them. And I'm not seeing a degradation in the GPU, in the usability of the system or the amount of memory being used. But I still think it's worth running all those tests again with these new settings just to make sure. So it looks like everything took a little bit of a hit, but that's just it. It was only a little bit of a hit that's probably not even worth talking about, I'm gonna share it anyway, cause that's why you're watching this video. Our GPU test is now down to 52.5 seconds. Our CPU test is down almost a full two seconds to 30 seconds. And our memory test is down to 35.3 seconds. 
Hmm, so something is happening. Before we move on to our next computer, I just had to do it. I hooked up all these monitors, all six of them, to one MacBook Pro, making a total of seven displays from this MacBook. And the way I did it was, of course, using a technology called Display Link. Now, this setup required some rearranging due to a peculiar issue with monitor rotation settings. One of my LG monitors that was vertical couldn't rotate to 90 degrees, unlike the other of the same exact model. Also, one monitor previously recognized as an LG monitor is now identified as an Apple XDR display. These anomalies suggest possible display link interference with monitor management, which adds an unexpected layer of configuring a multi-monitor setup. Hopefully, only a one-time thing for each machine. Under normal circumstances, I don't have this problem at all when I only have one external monitor hooked up or two. I wanted to add an iPad to bring my display count to eight. From the comments I've seen, some of you use iPads in sidecar mode, and this actually raised the temperature to 70 degrees from the usual 40 degrees. Now, I do have all these other monitors spinning at the same time, so it's not just sidecar. The fans which were previously off are now steady at around 1400 RPM due to the added heat from driving all the monitors and the chassis warms to 36 degrees. It's manageable for most tasks though, but this might pose some challenges for intensive activities like game development. I recently did an intense video with Unity, which I'll link down below too. With all displays active, Windows Server memory usage slightly increased, and overall memory consumption rose to 23.5 gigabytes. Performance tests showed minor slowdowns, with the CPU and GPU tests slightly impacted. This starts to reveal some of the trade-offs of a multi-monitor setup. All right, now I'm resetting everything to baseline by disconnecting everything. Now it just looks crazy in here because there's only one monitor active. Next machine, this is the M3 Max MacBook Pro. I'm only expecting better things at this point. I ran Whisper in 52.2 seconds and Mandelbrot showed a significant improvement at 17.6 seconds. The memory test completed in 29.9 seconds. So without monitors connected, Windows Server is already at two gigabytes of RAM. The system's total memory usage is higher than on the M2 Max starting at 24 gigabytes, including some swap usage. And I wouldn't put too much weight on how much memory is being used on the system. This increased memory footprint, even before connecting any monitors, kind of shows macOS's dynamic resource management. So you'll see different numbers and different levels of memory, and you'll be scratching your head wondering, what's going on here? Why is my 16 gigabyte machine using 15 gigabytes of RAM and I'm not even running anything? Well, it's macOS. You'll see this time and time again, and it's nothing to be afraid of. Not everything came back on to life. Uh, those two are not working. I got to figure out why. I swear I'm losing it. <laughs> this is a new machine. I did not install Display Link on this, and therefore, we don't get all those monitors. We only get four. Now, while messing around with this, I found something interesting here. In this drop down menu for adding my iPad as an external display, I noticed options for other devices, including two Apple TVs and several MacBooks that I'm testing that are in this office, too. Can I use these as additional monitors? This MacBook Air here? All the sound from all the videos are coming to here. I guess I always knew you can mirror to an Apple TV, but I had no idea you can mirror or extend your screen to another laptop. This MacBook Air is now an extension of the set of screens for the MacBook Pro. I mean, there is a significant lag here, don't get me wrong. But if you really needed to do this, I guess you could. That lag is just nasty. That was interesting. For the M3 Max, the Whisper test completed in 51.7 seconds, 3500 RPM for the fan right now. It's the loudest MacBook I've ever owned, and it's proud of it. <laughs> Memory tests took longer at 31.7 seconds, and the CPU's Mandelbrot test slowed down to 22.4 seconds. Surprisingly, Windows Server memory usage remained stable. Not what I expected. The main resource consumers here were Google Chrome helper processes, and this might have something to do with running two 8K videos simultaneously. I gotta get these other monitors on. Here I'm using Display Link for extra monitors again. I didn't have it installed in this one, so I need to install the drivers and give Display Link all the permissions and sign my life away. And after installation, I wait to see if the displays just light up. Boom, look at that. They just pop on. After connecting the new monitors, the screen layout automatically changes, which is annoying and it requires me to reorganize the setup to my original configuration. This is not so bad with two or three monitors, but it's pretty bad now. Surprisingly, the GPU test finished in 48.5 seconds, faster than before. However, the memory test slowed down to 32 seconds and the CPU slightly slowed down to 23 seconds, presenting a mixed effect on performance, 
which is unusual. On to our next machine. This is the M3 Pro, and it's supposed to handle less screens than the big boys that we just tested. So let's see what happens when I plug them in. Whisper at 55.3 seconds, Mandelbrot at 35 seconds, and memory test at 36.9 seconds. Definitely a clear performance drop here. Looking at the Windows Server process, we got 571 megabytes of RAM, with the total usage at 9.8 gigabytes out of the 18 available. Significantly lower than the usage of other devices. And I've said this before, that's how Mac macOS manages memory. It's not like all of a sudden Google Chrome decides to use more memory because it knows it's on an M3 Max machine with more memory available. No, it's macOS and it's actually perfectly normal. All right, let's plug in this side first. This is a Thunderbolt dock that has these two monitors connected to it and I should see them both pop up. Indeed they did. Let's do one more, just attempt some fate. This is the HDMI output to this monitor over here. Nothing happens over there. so. I guess we're done. Connecting the monitors immediately increased memory usage to 11 gigabytes with Windows Server consuming 757 megabytes. This demonstrates an immediate memory impact by adding displays. The temperature is a little bit higher now, but that's to be expected after doing the CPU test, which has slowed down quite a lot. Here we've got a big drop in performance down to 41.1 seconds, just from a standard two display setup, nothing crazy. Now, while the machine remained responsive, which is good, the GPU slowed down to one minute and the memory test slowed down to 40 seconds. Pretty typical usage conditions, but we do have a performance dip here. After switching to a display link hub, two additional monitors instantly popped on, and this raised the memory to 13.8 gigabytes and Windows Server to 1.24 gigabytes. This setup taxed the GPU, and I anticipated this. That 8K duck is so beautiful. I can see every feather. And performance test then showed a dip. Memory test took 41 and a half seconds, GPU test one minute and six seconds, and the CPU test was the most impacted, slowed down to 46.7 seconds. This was our GPU test right here. Sound effects, they make everything great. All right, who's next? The non-pro MacBook Pro. It doesn't even have a Thunderbolt hole on this side. Testing the M3 MacBook Pro, not the Pro or the Max, just the M3, this one revealed some slowdowns. However, its performance was decent. The memory test completed in 30 seconds, Mandelbrot in 44.4 seconds, and Whisper's GPU test in one minute and eight seconds. Starting from a slight disadvantage of having just eight gigabytes of RAM, the outcome kind of aligns with expectations for this hardware configuration. Since I can't plug this on this side, there's no holes. Let's bring this on this side. There we go. That's not true. There is an HDMI output there. I could have used that, but let's see how Thunderbolt does. One. And that's it, that's all we get, one. I tell you what though, this machine is pretty spiffy with just one monitor plugged into it. Let's get an 8K video going. Maxing out the native displays on this non-pro MacBook Pro, slightly extended memory test times to 30.9 seconds with a Whisper GPU test at one minute and 10 seconds and the CPU at 47 seconds. I'd say not bad. Despite being an eight gigabyte model, it used 6.7 gigabytes of RAM and just over three gigabytes of swap. Here we see Mac OS's dynamic RAM management based on availability. Dipping into that swap. A lot of people are complaining about that, but in reality, you probably won't even notice it. You'll probably get rid of that machine or sell it before you even experience any problems with that SSD. Another story for another time. With display link, memory pressure appeared, influencing performance. The memory test is at 31 seconds, GPU at one minute and 12 seconds, and CPU at 48 and a half seconds. So we're pushing this machine much harder now and it's starting to show, but not terrible. There's one more machine left and I'm expecting the same results as this one. This is the MacBook Air M2. Kicking off the MacBook Air, this being a 24 gigabyte RAM version and straight off the bat, it's gobbling up 16 gigabytes. Again, don't jump to conclusions. If you skip to this section, Mac OS loves to sprawl out when it's got room. This isn't a sign that it's overloaded, just macOS being macOS, making sure that it's using what's available. Remember folks, eight gigabytes of RAM on a Mac is like 16 gigabytes on Windows. <laughs> Leave your comments down below. All right, kidding, kidding. Okay, but if you want me to do a breakdown on how memory works and how it's different on a Mac or Windows, let me know in the comments down below too. Here, Windows Server is chilling at 689 megabytes. Diving into the test and you'll see 35 seconds for memory and Mandelbrot CPU test outpacing the M3 MacBook Pro at just 53 seconds. 
and the GPU is starting pretty strong at a minute and six seconds. It goes to show you again that the air is not just about light work. It can do some serious damage. Running the CPU test and it's really quiet in here and I'm wondering, is this test even running? I had to do a double take. The temperatures are at 108 degrees, but there's no noise because there's no fan. So I'm expecting this test to take a little bit longer. And of course, the CPU test suffered the most because of those temperatures. If I ran this more than once in a row, it would really drastically slow down. But the CPU is at 58.6 seconds here. Not horribly worse, but a little worse. The GPU is actually about the same, one minute and seven seconds, and the memory test is faster. Faster? 34.4 seconds total. Now that the M3 MacBook Airs were announced, those chips are supposed to be hotter, so we'll see how that affects performance. Stay tuned for that on this channel. I've got a surprise for you. This MacBook Air is now connected to one, two, three, four displays. So that's a total of five, including the internal one. Display Link helped out here. Let's take a look at Windows Server. 880 megabytes of RAM, 15.3 gigabytes of memory used. So we're not really doing much here. The machine is still perfectly usable like it was before. Now it's important to realize that a fan can really do wonders, especially when dealing with some really heavy workloads like I've been throwing at this thing. And uh, the result kind of shows. Let me show you. Now we're waiting for the GPU results, but the CPU timing shocked me. Four minutes and 28 seconds. Ouch. It seems like this collection of monitors, display link and iPad significantly strains the CPU. That's a shocker. But because there is no active cooling in this machine, this is what happens. The memory test also extended to one minute and 30 seconds. Wow, almost three times longer than before. This is a substantial impact on performance. Clearly having sidecar open, having display link playing is having a really huge adverse effect. Our GPU test just finished. And we're at three minutes and 26 seconds for the GPU result, the slowest I've seen so far. Adding more screens turned out to be more than just getting more surface area to do my work. It was a real test of what these machines can handle under the hood. Everyone's workflow is a little different, so hopefully you can find a good balance between having enough real estate and performance for your own needs. I want to extend my thank you to the channel members who got to see the full version of this video early and gave me some feedback on it. Thank you so much. And if you want to join to help support the channel and get access to members only videos, there's a join button right down below. Knowing what you know now about performance, check this video out to see how to get M2 and M3 based machines to display more than one external screen. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.